In programming, we have something called data encapsulation, and that is making your variables private so that other classes cannot access it. So for example, here for our variable speed, we can make it public and we can also make it private. So what that basically means? Well, if we make it private, that means that this variable will not be accessible outside of this class. Now to demonstrate this, we will go here in this universal. And what I'm going to do is here, I'm going to use our player script. So player, and I'm just going to name it player and it's equal to, and here I'm going to use game object dot find game object with tag. And I will explain in a second what this basically means. And here I'm going to pass player and here I'm going to say dot get component. And here I'm going to pass our player script in order to get that player script. First, I will explain what this game object that find game object with tag means. Well, basically, if I go in the Unity editor and if I select my player game object, I have tagged that game object to be player. So simply click on this tag here and check this player. You can also add your custom tags. So here you can well click on this add tag and then you can click on this plus sign and add your custom tags. But we already have a player tag. So simply tag it. Now what this means? Well, basically game object dot find game object with tag, it will search for a game object in the scene that has a tag player and it will get me that game object. Now I'm using get component, well, which we did in the previous video, in order to get the component that is attached to that game object and I'm getting the player script basically. Now that we have a reference to our player script, we can access the properties of our player script. So for example, we have here speed and I will make it public so that I will demonstrate what I was talking about. So now that our well speed variables public, I can say here player dot speed. So let me just type in right. So player dot speed and I will be able to access this well variable speed here. But now notice what happens if I change this variable from public to private. So now the variable is private. And now if I say player dot speed, we see that even our speed variable does not pop up here. So we cannot select it. I can go back here and again, change it to public. And here we see that we can access it and everything is basically fine. So let me just type that right. So it's player dot speed and now we can access it. Again, if you change it to, well, private, then we cannot access it. That's what I was talking about when I said that if a variable is private, it will be only accessible inside of that same class. Now, the general rule in programming, you should always keep your variables private, not letting other classes, well, to manipulate that variable. But if you want that variable still to be manipulated by other classes, you will provide getters and setters. And also functions can be private and public. So here I will create a public void and this will be set speed. And this is called a setter. Now what this means? Well, basically here we are going to pass a parameter which will be int speed. And inside of it, we are going to manipulate this variable. So again, we are going to use the this keyword referring to the this class and this variable here. So here we are going to say this dot speed is equal to speed that we are providing here as an argument in this function. And that way we will manipulate this speed variable. Now this function here that allows us to set this variable is called a setter and a getter is like this. It will be public int and it will be get speed. And inside of it, we are going to say return this dot speed it will return this variable. So the speed variable, again, this referring to this class and this dot speed referring to this variable right here. Now, as I said, also functions can be public or private. And the same thing goes, if our function is private, we will not be able to access it here by using player dot the name of the function. If it's public, then we can access it. So now that we have set our setter and getter, we can go here and we can say, for example, player dot set speed and here we can pass, for example, let's say 50, and this will change the speed of our player. If we want to get that speed of the player, we are going to say player dot get speed, and this will return us, well, the speed property, and we will have that information. One other thing that we can do with our variables is that we can make them static. Now, what that means? 
Well, here I can say public static and we have our int power. Now, in order to access a static variable, we don't need a reference to our class. So we don't need to say player and then get component to get that class. We can simply use the name of the class to access this variable. So here we can simply say player dot, so not plain, it will be player dot, and here we can say power, so the name of our variable, and we can access this variable right here. If our variable is not static, so if we remove this right here, then we are not able to do this and we see that we have a problem. So, well, mono behavior is pointing that to us. But again, if I set it to be static like this, now we can access this variable and we will not have any problems. So here I will just, well, type it again. So now we can access this power variable simply using, well, the name of the class and then, well, the name of that, well, variable. Now, in the previous video, we are using, or we were using, get component in order to get, well, the components from our game objects. But now we can use our, well, data, or excuse me, our visibility modifier. So we can say, for example, public, and here we can say rigid body 2D, and now I can name it my rigid body, so my rigid body like this, and I have declared a public rigid body 2D. Now, you might be wondering what this has to do with, well, getting the component. Well, now, if I go back into Unity, we will see that we have this my rigid body, which is basically a public variable now. We have it here in the inspector panel, so we see that we have it, well, a reference. Now, I can go here and simply say add component and add the rigid body to our, well, universal game object. And now, since our game object has a rigid body, I can simply drag it here and, well, well, simply release the mouse button and now we have a reference to that rigid body so we see here that we have well universal and rigid body instead of using well get component so which is well a little bit slower now we can simply drag and drop our rigid body from the hierarchy panel directly here and we have a reference to that rigid body now, I did said that it's better to make your, well, variables private because that will prevent other scripts from accessing it. But one problem that we have here when we make our variable private is that it's no longer visible here in the inspector panel and we cannot drag and drop our, well, rigid body basically. And again, we would need to use get component, well, in order to do that. Now, to fix this problem, we are simply going to, well, open this square bracket here and type serialize field. And now we will simply, well, save this. Now, this serialize field, even though our variable is private, it will make it visible here in our inspector panel again. So if I go back, we will see that again, we have my rigid body visible here in the inspector panel. And again, you can simply drag and drop it here. And that way you will get a reference to the rigid body. And this is not only for the rigid body, this can be well used for the animator, for the colliders or any other component, even for the scripts that are attached on our game objects here that we see in the inspector panel.